，抢抢过去了。OK， 呃、uh, ，We have some、uh, technical problem trying to solve, but、uh, maybe well they are working on that.、Uh, let's just start the last session uh, of this uh, uh, meeting.、Uh, we have three talks. Uh, uh, one from our local,、uh, another two from our European. Uh, but, uh, let's start the, the first talk. Uh, it's our local uh, uh, scientist, uh, Kim and Chan. He has been doing cryophysics、uh, and related uh, you know, wide range. So today he's going to talk about、uh, long-lived particles at Higgs、uh, factories and uh, LHEC. So、uh, Kim and is your okay. Thank you, Xiao Gang, and thank you for the chair of the of the meeting, Chongzhen, for giving me the last not the last chance, but the chance to speak here. All right. So today I'll talk about、um, a topic that、uh, I start learning、uh, one years ago, and、uh, this long-lived particle at the Higgs factory and at the new type collider, HeE electron photon collider.、Uh, this work is mainly、um, done by postdoc Simon here. Simon is is here, and also the collaborators. And、um, okay. So next page. So. What's the motivation? As we all know, that we find Higgs bosons, and perhaps this is one of the only way to go into the underlying physics of electron weak symmetry breaking. Okay, and、um, of course we can make use of the Higgs boson in many ways. We can look for the just like、uh, Ian say, we can look for through this Higgs boson to look for other Higgs bosons. The other way. Uh, that we focus today is to look for the rare decay of Higgs bosons because、uh, the branching ratio of Higgs has been measured, but with a high, still high uncertainty. There may be some, still some room that we can look for some long standard model channel that we are looking for. For some dark matter or some here, I'm looking at some exotic light particles. They are not necessarily the dark matter, but just maybe something hidden in the hidden sector. All right, so. Now, especially people has talk about the Higgs portal models, that is Higgs boson as a bridge to the hidden sector. So we will focus on this kind. Well, another motivation that we look for the long-lived particle is that now all the current, um, well, so far we don't see anything new in the Eric C. Maybe there are some systematic shortcoming that we don't know of. Right now, most of the studies. No matter hardware or software trigger, mostly focus on the prompt decaying particles. Okay, and for example, we look for the squarks, uh, Galeno, or even some top top partner particle in the composite Higgs models. We look for the prompt decay, so we may have missed something. Okay, so so another class of particle which is quite exotic is long-lived particles, and And actually, is there is quite a number of us beyond standard model that actually predict the existence of long-lived particles. So the focus, well, long-lived here, I mean, like within the collider detect light atlas or CMS, the you can see some decay link. Okay, they measured the this is the resolution. Sorry, yeah, I should using this one. The resolution about 10 microns, up to the size of detector, CMS maybe a few. Meter and LS are around 10 meters. Now there are some new proposal called Phaser, which is located at 480 meter away from the interaction point. And、uh, some well, Phaser is already approved. It will be is installing, is being installed, and will be running at the same time as the Run3 as I anticipate. And there's another、uh, other proposal like this one, Mesusila, which is located maybe. I don't know, maybe a few kilometers from the interaction point. They try to look for the long-lived particle that actually travel a long, a long time before it decays. All right. So now, and also the coming run of CMS and Atlas, they will install、um, new kind of a trigger to specifically to look for this、uh, this kind of long-lived particles. And actually, there, like CMS, have the high granularity calorimeter. Actually. Uh, it's very good for this purpose. All right. Anyway. 
Okay, so signatures of long-lived particle. So uh, just by definition, this particle will travel a macroscopic distance that you can measure it, and then it decays. So whether you can decay into uh, leptons or charged particle, you will see a displaced vertex, all right? And uh, of course, the easiest, easiest mode that, that you can detect is to decay into charged leptons like muons or electrons, which is you, you can easily identify in the detector. And, um, and today, well, actually, there are some more difficult modes like decay into like hydronic B jets, all right? You know, B jet or B quarks or B mesons already is a displaced, it already has a displaced ver vertex. Now you look for something that may be, have in some case may be difficult to dis be distinguished from this kind, all right? Now there are a few models, I just flash a few of them, like our parity violating SUSI when the coupling of the, these kind of couplings very small, and then this decay like neutrino can travel quite a bit of time before it decay into three jets or, or, or charged leptons. Heavy charged lepton that can exist in a number of moles of like a, what's that, a sterile neutrino or right-hand neutrino. And there are also some kind of uh, portal models that have, that are C bosons are, is the link to the hidden sector. The coupling or the mixing can be very small such that you can travel long distance. Now today we will talk about the Higgs portal model. Again, the Higgs you, you, is a bridge to link to the hidden sector. Okay. So the first topic is the um, uh, at the Higgs factory. Okay, so there's some a few a couple of proposals here, as well three, like CEPC, E plus C minus collider working at the energy around 240, 240 GeV, and FEE, FCC, or ILC. The first operating mode that they had in their plan is to run at the Higgs bosons, and they they have about about one million Higgs oops, sorry, hex particles that are being produced and we look for the, um, the rare decays. So you have to look for something that uh, you still be able to see something with a reasonable branching ratio, like 10 to minus four, then you will expect about uh, 100 events, all right? Okay, so this is a, a structure, geometry of the detector, like um, this is an interacting point and you have a, uh, this part is the trigger. Oh, sorry, is the, what's that called? Tracker, tracking system that you can see the charged track travel around here, all right? Um, at the size of them, uh, our eye is uh, like the, the beam, what's the, the size of the beam here. The whole is about, about a border one centimeter and uh, this part is of order like a couple meters, all right? And the outside part is the perimeter, okay? And this is, uh, can, you can see, it can be all the, all the way up to about uh, two mi uh, LD, LD was LD. Yeah, it's, it's right right here. Oh, here, the size of them will be in the next, next page, okay. Uh, I'll show it once again later on. So we have uh, just a calculation details here to, to tell you how, this is very simple, just the idea is to, when you want to see something in a certain part of the detector, you, you let it um, be stable until in that part of the detector and then let it decay, okay? So just like in this one, uh, this is probability that uh, you see a signal event in the inner tracker. So um, basically you allow one, okay, let's see. We allow, we see one of them. Let me go to the next page. So essentially if we are, uh, so this is the ratio, this is the, uh, the, the probability that you can travel a distance of Li. I mean, uh, yeah, before decay. And this one minus is the probability that you would decay within that part of the uh, detector. All right, so in doing that, then we can, uh, find the average probability that this particle can uh, can be seen in the this part of the detector or in the HCAL or in the, what's it called? Um, muon spectrometer, all right? 
And this is the number of events that we expect to see, the luminosity, cross-section, and the branching ratio of Higgs bosons, and then the probability, all right? And after all, we can estimate the number of events that we should be able to see the Higgs factory, all right? Okay, so I'll skip this one. And um, so this is the dimension of the, I should use this one, the dimension of the, uh, well, the rest part of the detector, the central part, the central part was the tracker that I show you. This is the dimension of uh, the outer part. You can see the dimension is of uh, here is of order like um, five to five to ten meters. All right, and this is the volume of the this part of the detector. So we are looking at three three parts. One is the inner tracker, and then the HCAL, and then is muon spectrometer. In general, the muon spectrometer is in the in the on the on the very much outside. All right. And the first model we look at is Higgs Potter model. It's a very simple model. And this is X is the extra field beyond the standard model. And it has some mixing with the standard model Higgs field here. Through. So, in, so in this model, there were three parameters, which is the um, mu X, lambda X, and the mix, lamp mixing parameters. So this Higgs field phi just take, a, take, on, take on a vacuum expectation value. And this X field also take on a vacuum expectation values. And and there's and it will mix together to form the observed Higgs bosons, and the, something that is new HS is something new, the new scalar. And the mass of the HS we supposed to be very light. We focus on very light um, HS. Okay, and the HS that of particular our interest here is of order 0 0.3 to only one GeV. And the reason we choose that because they will form particularly interesting signature, all right? Uh, when the particles very light and travel with a uh, energy like one half of Higgs boson because it's decay from Higgs bosons, it will have an energy like 50 or 60 GeV when, we, when this mass. So, which means that the opening angle of the particle are very small of all the 0.1 radian. So, um, there will be a very interesting object. We call, if this is lepton, we call it like a lepton jet, a very narrow chrome of a pair of leptons. Actually, in some kind of model, you can have more than two, lep two muons. You can have four muons all together. But here, I just focus on those with uh, two, uh, two muons and two pions. And also, actually, we can also go to four pions, but with a much smaller benching ratio. Mostly um, because of uh, the, sorry, the pion modes is much more, larger than the mu one mode, especially when the mass is getting heavier. So this is the, the coverage of sensitivity of the model. So this is the mixing angle sine theta, and this is the mass of the uh, new scalar boson. Here we have 0.3 to about one GeV. And the, and the uh, shaded region in gray and the darker gray, uh, okay, the gray one is the current limit, and the darker gray is the uh, predicted limit at the high luminosity runoff of LHC. And this is the coverage that we can do at the like um, CEPC, one of, one of curves CEPC, the red one, the green one is the FEE, sorry, FCCEE, okay. And this is focused on the muon, di, di muons, okay. So this part of the detector is actually doing better than LHC. I mean, the, even the future run of LHC. Now, uh, and the two case, one is uh, for this one, two, one of the parameters, one is 10 GeV and the web is 100 GeV. So just focus on this one. And this is a coverage by the um, muon spectrometer. Now it is not work, it's not as good as the Eric C. So, but for the tracker part, this seems to be doing better than the Eric C. Now, this is the decay of the two pions. Okay, so for two pi on also doing uh, better than the Eric than the Eric C predicted. Even for the H cow, you can have a better coverage than the Eric C, and same for the muon spectrometer. Okay, of course the result depends on the web. This is the web of 10 GeV, and this is a web 100 100 GeV. This one is better. All right. Now another model that we look at is the neutral naturalist model. Um, the model was originally proposed to solve the gauge hierarchy problem, okay? Just to uh, using the same spin of the particle to cancel the quadratic divergence. Now, the particular thing, 
uh, the normal naturalist model predict a colored top partner that will be already kind of the limit being pushed up to at least a few TGB by the current RxC search. Now, the proposal here was the, uh, the top partners was uncolored. So it, it can only be produced by either two weak processes. So therefore the limit will be much weaker. So the, um, well, I don't go into the detail, just call one example. It's called photo supersymmetry and they have such particle that's a neutral color neutral but can produce uh, in the electroweak pro process and it can cancel the quadratic divergence all right and in this kind of model we are looking at, at this kind of what, what we call mirror glue balls yeah oh don't ask me about the much detail about this how does it form the glue ball but just uh, there's some kinds of objects and we look at the these hex bosons decay into this glue ball and the glue ball range okay uh so this, uh, okay, zero plus plus is the symbol for the glue ball and decaying a part, a pair of standard model particle given by these expressions. And here, uh, well, we don't need to care about this detail, but just say with the change shift, uh, change of this top, this parameter y square m square can be a representative of different type of model here. We focus still we focus on for the SUSI in this talk in the next couple of slides. And in this model, we have two parameters that we can work with. One is M0, the other is the mass of the colored, uncolored top partner for this photo supersymmetry. All right. Well, this is the spectrum of this model. This is the mass of the glue ball relative to this parameter M0. And in this model, there are this is a Higgs boson decay into this glue ball, essentially given by this expression. In particular, there is some kind of uncertainty here, Kappa here we put here. Kappa take on the maximum value to be one. So this is mainly due to the effect of glue ball heterogenization uh, properties. And we also list the minimum that we expected. So the result would then depends on this Kappa, all right? Now, of course, in uh, Kappa equal to one, you have the large expansion ratios, all right? Okay, so uh, that's how we look at that. We look at the range of 10 to 60 GeV, and for this mass, this mass range, the major decay product is the B quarks. Okay, so going to a pair of B quarks, and this is some requirement uh, to make sure we can deal with the standard model background. Okay, we require a pretty large um, displaced vertex in order to reduce the standard model background. Actually, in this study, um, we assume the standard model background that can come into the signal range to be zero, all right? So this is some kind of a very idealistic coverage. Okay, so this is the coverage of the model, the parameter M0 and the parameter, the mass of the uncolored the top partner. Okay, so, and we use like three, 10 and 100 events to um, quantify our sensitivity region, okay? So uh, as I've said, the decay rate depends on the kappa, kappa maximum equal to one and kappa uh, minimum is say smaller than one. So we can see for the black, black curve correspond to kappa maximum, you have a better coverage and the red one is for the kappa minimum. It's a, um, not as good as the kappa equal max coverage, all right? And in this case, you can see uh, still the tracker, the coverage are much better than h cow and the mu one spectrometer, all right? And the difference between uh, CEPC and FCC is very, actually the difference is very small, all right? Okay, so we come to the second part of the talk. Again, this is work done by Simon and the collaborators, and they are very good at, actually in this work, we had, we overcome some uh, technical difficulties because most of the period study just depends on the, the size of the detector to make sure that the long lived particle actually decay in there. Now here we you do it as a reconstructed level, which means that um, we try to reconstruct the displaced jet to get the information about the, how long is the displaced vertex, especially difficult if this is a, is a jet, okay? 
because you have to combine all the tracks together in, to be more form a form a form a jet. Okay. Actually, it take a quite quite a few months before we we understand how the how the program work. Okay. So essentially, the um the decay is similar. So at the this is the electron proton collision. The major production mode of Higgs boson is through the WW fusions. And this hex boson will decay the pair of, um, in this model, a hidden, uh, a hidden hex, which is a small mixing with the standard model hex. All right. And then decay uh, a pair of B quarks. And then second pair. So two pair, two pair of B quarks. Uh, and they form a like displaced vertex. And one forward jet. We will try to look at the signature. And the model. It's also the same similar model, except this one is the Higgs field. Sorry, the S field is a complex scale. Well, actually, all the formula are similar to the, to the previous one. And this is the more model that we look at. Well, this. Uh, hey. uh, what is special about the EP collision? It could, the signal could have just the PP collision can produce the same thing. What's the special about using uh, EP collision? Well, first of all, EP has not been studied. And second, we, we argue that actually the coverage will be better. And also because of clean environment, we can see uh, the displaced B jet. Yeah. That is the main reason. If you look at the electron ion. Oh, I think Simon did a very simple estimate. Yeah, the, yeah, the production rate is. But you know it's going to be built. It's really going to be built? OK. Yes. I see. Yeah, we look at the, the hex cross section is extremely tiny. I think less than one hex boson in the entire run. Yeah, because the energy is too, too low. Send mass and energy, yeah, just I remember. Okay. So this is just some uh, expression to complete the study. The branching ratio, standard model hex go to into a pair of this hex boson, and this is a decay length. Okay. So decay length proportional to the mixing angle. Okay. And the mass of that. I'm oh, sorry. This is a decay width. This is decay decay length. Okay. And the mass range, particular, we look at the 10 to 60 GeV. Um, and the signature is this one. So is the W W fusion. We have a forward jet. And then a pair of the uh, displaced B jet. Oh, 10 minutes. Okay, good. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, so next one. Uh, this is some calculation details. All right. Why? Well, oh, okay. This is the, well, we use MacGraph and Pythia, especially. And the reason why I use Pythia 6 because uh, we need to patch it. And the patch that we can obtain is only available for PTA6, not PTA8. Okay. So in the future, we may want to go to PTA8 because that is, I think, is supposed to be better. Now, the more important one is the we need to use this customized Delphus to do the simulations to allow the definition of displaced jet. Actually, for each track, we have to um, define this quantity to make sure. The uh, well, the minimum has to be larger than a certain value because in order to define this displaced chain. This is the uh, actually more difficult part. Okay, and the one we and then we look at the um, background because actually we also study the background. Well, one may ask if in principle all the background from the standard model are prompt, right? But you know. When you have a huge cross section from QQCD, although you multiply it by a very tiny uh, efficiency, we may still get a few events that you that you cannot just easily say I put it away. So we have to deal with that. All right. So these are the background that we consider. So we have a um, number of B jet, number of tau jet, because at some point the tau jet can they look like a uh, a, a jet, okay? And NJ is number of jets. We consider to be less than four. Okay, so the event selection, uh, the required reconstructed jets to be larger than five. 
because we have four PJ, one forward jet, so at least to be larger than five. Uh, and the jet is this place that if this quantity, the trans in the transverse plane, the distance larger than 50 microns. All right. Okay. And the number of displaced jet we need to be larger, at least at least one. All right. And uh, because we have two PJ all together, we we have to group it in the correct way. We want to, we don't want to grab, uh, group this B jet with this B because it doesn't make sense. We want to group uh, this coming from one scalar boson decay, the other B, two B jet from another B, another scalar decay. We want to group it properly, all right? So we have this one. So we need this one. Uh, so we we'll, the displaced jet are grouped together in the form of heavy group. And we make sure the heavy group, of course, their transverse displacement has to be less. If uh, if their displacement, okay, because 50 is my, is our like minimum resolutions. When they're coming from and the distance is about less than 50 micron, we assume they come together. All right. If they're larger than that, we cannot say they come come together. So we need something that come together, and the invariant mass of this heavy group has to be larger than six. So it's larger than the B boson mass. B boson mass. All right. And yeah, and then at the end, you know that these two happy group the very much coming from hex boson. So we look at this mass window. So this hex mass window, and then we can calculate the number of signal events and number of background uh, background uh, events. After we put out everything and we found the number of background events under the assumed velocity is about for the 200, actually 195. So we'll use this number to do our estimate how the sensitivity to the mixing angle and so on. All right, next slide. So this is the result. Uh, this is the, the y-axis is the mixing angle and the x-axis is the mass of this um, scalar bosons from 10 to 60. And this curve are our sensitivity curve. So this the background event is given 195 and the signal event just are called 95% confidence level is around, it's about 28, okay. Now, on the other hand, if we take the ideal case, the number of background is zero, then the number of signal events is three, 95% confidence level. Okay, so we just show the result. Of course, the best result will be like, uh, the web is 10 GeV and number of background is zero. In that case, we can come down to a certain mass range that can come down to my 10 minus eight. It's a very small uh, mixing angle okay but for the more realistic case 195 10 GeV we get to around 10 to minus 7 okay and the dashed line are the um, branching ratio the miscible branching ratio of Higgs let me show the next slide that is the uh, compare with the current limit okay thank you yeah I should be on time uh, this is the current limit from Eric C CMS that is the um, hex branching ratio uh, against uh, this one is against the decay length and this is against the mass of scalar boson. CMS already have some existing uh, search for the long lived particle. So, but their coverages are quite uh, quite narrow. So they only cover the, the CMS limits from 40 and to about 55 GeV and the decay, decay length is of order at least one, uh, at least more than one millimeter. And this is the sensitivity of the Eric, our electron proton collider. You can see for some, actually, we extend the coverage down to about, oh, how, how much is that? 10 minus five meter, okay. And the mass range can go down to about 10 to 40. So really extend the um, current search for Eric C. Even the dashed one is the, our projection of high luminosity high luminosity run of RxC. So I think this is a big, uh, quite a bit of improvement to have a better coverage of the mass and the decay length. Okay, oh, again, this is the ideal case. Ideal case at the zero background, of course, the coverage will be even better. You can see the branching ratio, just go back to the previous slide. Uh, the branching ratio, coverage is 10 minus three, okay. And the current limit from the Jennifer's talk is about 9%, okay. Now we can come down to 10 minus three. Of course, for ideal case, you can go come down to 10 minus four. 
um, well, this is the okay. So the best sensitivity that we obtain obtain is for this mass range between 12 to 20. For if if for the mass around 10 GeV, they have some um, systematics background, systematic background from the B meson. So actually, it turned out this the limit around 10 is not good. So the best limit, best mass range is from 12 to 20, and this is the um, decay length, the best sensitivity that we can. Or of that. If the um, decay length is less than one micron, actually the H2 decay is practically prompt, and uh, the reconstructed displacement, the final state cannot be entangled from the display decay of the B meson. The B meson will become big background if the the C tau very small. All right. Now I think I'll just conclude. Extending to search a long-lived particle actually can cover a large parameter space for very very small though, but very small coupling. Okay. And the branching ratio that we can probe now can be down to minus three to minus four. Actually, it's very impressive. And uh, this is uh, one of the very few studies that we construct the, the displaced jet. And actually, um, we, are, we will go into more into this direction to get a more realistic uh, limit of various model. Okay, I'll stop here today. Thank you. Thank you, Kima, for the nice talk. Uh, so we now open for questions. Uh, maybe uh, online, is there any questions? Well, okay, so maybe not, not uh, for the moment. So from the audience. So you don't want to be detected. Well right? understood. <laughs> uh, I take it. Okay. Is Jose ready? Yeah, so you want to get off? I don't <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay. Okay uh -huh. for me. I finished my job. Uh -huh. Well, okay. So, uh, uh, <laughs> I said this year, I finished my job. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you mentioned uh, somewhere you say this uh, actually the invisible is uh, 9%. Of oh, the current from actually from pre uh, Jennifer's talk, in previous talk, she's called 9%. 9% is uh, existing or projected? Ah, good question. So let's see. As far as I as I know, a direct search is about 50%. And of course, in in my work with uh, Jason Lee, the indirect, including all the fitting, is around nine is around 10%. So the 9% may be projected in a one three. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But the current direct search is about oh no. Um Okay, maybe, maybe it's right. Yeah. Okay, I think the way we say your formula H1 to HS, S, 2S, there was a four missing in a time hole. Very early on, H to HS, HS. Next. Oh, HS, HS is to this one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you have a formula? Uh, oh, the uh, formula. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this one. I, I, I suppose that, that, that since this is two HS at the end, there must be some four, you know, four. Uh, MH minus four at MHS. That's the You mean this one? Ah, okay. Yeah, well, uh, I hope the, hope the old calculation was about, uh, right, but uh, here it's just, uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah uh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, so, so, very naive question. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know anything of this, but just, it seems to be uh, in the old time, we would just calculate the cross section of the collected particle. That's what we refer to the weather. And now, uh, we want to look at more detailed structure of each event, including the displacement of the, of the, uh, the beam of, the, of this particle. Okay. Is there any systematic way or theoretical understanding about this characterizing this large particle? Mm, I think um, if I understand the question correctly, uh, 
the main reason to look for this kind of long-lived particle is, um, well, first of all, we don't see anything new so far. So maybe systematically we miss something. So for for example, um, well, I don't I don't know, just human example. I uh, you you do not put put your detector in the right place. So all, all the thief coming in, they avoid this region, so you don't see them. Now now we now next round we put the detector there, and they come in, we will see them. Um, actually, actually, a lot of models, if you tune up, if you change the parameter, you can have long lived particle. Like, um, what's that? Like, inverse, like seesaw model. If uh, in some kind of seesaw model, the right hand neutrino can be just TeV. Now, for the very small coupling, then TeV right hand neutrino can decay within after traveling some distance. Yeah, so um, I, I, I don't know if I can, I, I have answered your question, but uh, yeah, I try my best. Oh, okay, so you still have something to do. Yeah, uh, because of our time, I'd love to hear from you. Let's thank you, Nayeh. So, uh, let's talk about the first uh, 